Hey guys, it's X, and welcome back aboard the Bridge of the Hyperion. We're not going to be spending too much time in the intro here, though, as we're going straight down to the laboratory. Last time, we were looking through Zeratul's memories. Zeratul gave us this Ehon crystal, so that Rainer could look into his memories and see exactly what Zeratul has seen. And apparently, it's very important. There is a Zelnaga prophecy that the Zelnaga are going to return. And we're not sure what this means. Kerrigan thinks it means that the Zelnaga are going to come to destroy all of creation. And Zeratul maintains hope that that is not the case. He says the prophecy is uncertain. We don't know what their purpose for returning is. So, we've seen the first part of Zeratul's memories, and it would make sense that we go see the rest of them fairly soon. But there are other things that need doing before we do that, and Raynor could probably use a break from the stresses that come with looking into someone else's memories anyway. Also, last time, I gave you guys the choice between orbital depots and micro-filtering. Orbital depots will allow us to summon supply depots down instantly with our SEVs, similar to the way the Protoss do with their warp technology and all of their structures. Um, so instant supply depots gives us less time where we're supply-capped, and we, have, we can generate a bigger army faster as long as we have the resources to do so. Also, it frees up SCVs for mining time, so we generate slightly more minerals with this upgrade. Microfiltering allows us to generate Vespine gas 25% faster. Now, gas is usually is usually the bottleneck of your resources, and honestly, I think that this upgrade is the smarter upgrade. If you're playing StarCraft II in a way that is uh, that should be 100% the most optimal way to play, you would probably want to get microfiltering because it generally is a better upgrade than orbital supply depots, in my opinion, and in mo and a, a lot of people's opinion. I mean, being able to generate gas 25% faster is a big deal. Especially when you're going for a lot of gas-heavy units like siege tanks, goliaths, and uh, later on aerial units. So I really think microfiltering is the more optimal choice, but the votes won out for orbital depots. So orbital depots is what I'm going to select. Also, another reason that I'm doing it, uh, that I'm going to select orbital depots, is because the last time that I played through StarCraft II, which was like a year and a half ago, remember, it was quite a long time ago, but the last time that I played, I chose microfiltering. I did. Uh, I figured it was the better choice, and I haven't actually gotten the chance to play with orbital supply depots before. And this time around, I'm kind of playing for fun. I'm not really playing in the most optimal way that I possibly could. Um, that's why we chose things like the Shrike turret, because they look a lot cooler than fortified bunkers. I mean, fortified bunkers don't get anything except an extra 150 health, but the Shrike turret adds a gun on top of the bunkers, which just looks cool. Same thing with the Perdition turrets. Perdition turrets are awesome. They're burrowed units, and, well, they're concealed units, and they come up and they unleash this torrent of flame upon the enemy, which is pretty awesome as well. So, yeah, we're choosing a bunch of things that are just, like, really cool. Uh, aggressive de it's an aggressive defensive style. Uh, and orbital depots are just cool. I haven't gotten to play with them before, so that's why I'm doing it, because last time I also chose microfiltering, and the votes did win out for orbital depots. <laughs> and the reason that I explain so much my decision on why I'm choosing orbital depots is because I know there's going to be a flood of comments from those of you who wanted microfiltering and from those of you who play StarCraft in a way that is supposed to be most optimal. I know this is going to be a choice that um, the people who wanted microfiltering are going to hate. <laughs> so I wanted to explain why, I'm, why exactly I'm doing it. Not only did the votes win out for orbital depots, but just barely, but also I haven't played with them before, so I'm, I'm choosing it for a fun, just a fun way to play. So. I mean, it's just an awesome little way to build supply depots. <laughs> so that's why we're choosing it. There we go. And let's move on. Nothing to do out. Uh, nothing to do down here in the laboratory, other than the crystal, which we're not going to be touching for the time being. I'm going to check back in the armory. Make sure we didn't miss out on anything. I want to make sure my credits are low. They are, which means we got. Yes, we got the siege tank maelstrom rounds. That's the one we purchased. Okay. So we're good here, and people left in the comments letting me know that I forgot to check out the new mercenaries. Lots of folks ready to fight for the right price. Uh, Spartan Company. I believe those are the ones that are the ones. That, no. Yes, this Spartan Company. You guys wanted to see the elite Goliaths, and that's what they are. They're Goliaths with 30 th with an additional 33% health and an additional 33% damage. Wow, they even look a lot cooler. They look bulkier. I wish I could zoom in on those from here. We're not going to be hiring them for the time being. Right now, I think war pigs and siege breakers are enough. We've only got 75,000 credits left, and hiring any mercenaries is going to cost at least 25,000 for the devil dogs. But the ones that we would want to hire right now would either be the hammer securities uh, marauders or the Spartan Company's goliaths. 
uh, which are going to be a little bit too expensive right now, I think. So we're not going to be selecting either of these. You know what? Maybe we will select Hammer Securities. I'm glad you guys have to comment for me to come check out Spartan Company. Although they're not going to be the ones that I'm going to hire. I am going to hire Hammer Securities. I don't see why not. Let's do it now. So now we're really low on credits. But I think they're worth having. Those buffed up Marauders. Uh, and don't worry, I will be getting around to the arcade at some point. Alright, I think that covers everything for now. Because we covered all the things that we needed to talk, all the people that we needed to talk to in the news broadcast in the last one. So, let's get to the bridge. And let's head over to Tarsonis. Oh, we have a new mission. After doing the uh, Crystal Memory mission. Okay. Okay, well, this is perfect then. Uh, so, Tarsonis will be the one that we're going to go to right now. This is going to be the train robbery. And now we've also got a choice between two other missions. We've got a choice between Haven, which is where Dr. Ariel Hansen has brought her people, if you guys will remember. She brought her people to Haven to, uh, as a refuge from the Zerg. But it's right at the edge of Protoss space. So let's I'm going to give you guys a vote between New Folsom or Haven. So let's start with Haven and see what exactly is going on there. My people established a new colony on Haven. It was going well, but now the colony's gone dark. They're not responding on any frequency need to get there and see what the situation is. They might have been exposed to the Zerg virus, and they are on the verge of Protoss space. Jim, I'm worried that something has gone very wrong. Okay. So there are a couple of threats here. It could be Pro that's a come we don't know what the research opportunities are. It could be Protoss coming to purge the virus that may be infecting the Terrans here on Haven that uh, Dr. Ariel Hansen has set as a refuge. Um, or it could be that there is more Zerg problems. So we don't know what our research opportunities are going to be available on this. We don't know which threat we're going to be facing. Maybe both. Not sure. To be honest, I honestly don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember anything about this mission whatsoever. I didn't even realize this mission existed. Um, sure, we saw it previously, but I don't remember anything about this mission. <laughs> so there is that. 125,000 credit reward is the only thing we really know about it. And we'll open up the Viking, which I believe is our first offensive aerial unit. The Viking is sort of like an aerial Goliath. Um, Vikings are available in the multiplayer. Goliaths are not. In any case, we've also got New Folsom. New Folsom is ripe for the taking, man. Every voice that was ever raised against Minsk is pinned up inside those walls. We let all them prisoners loose, and he'll never know what hit him. Just let me know when you're ready to pull the trigger. <laughs> it's been a while since we've actually done anything for or heard from Gabriel Tosh other than his cryptic messages that he leaves us in the cantina. So, New Folsom is a prison world, and this is where... Well, let me just read the description to you. The, the description to you. New Folsom is a notorious political prison where enemies, in the, uh, sorry, enemies of the Dominion are kept on ice. Its remote location and inhospitable landscape make escape virtually impossible. So, this is a prison world, and Tosh wants us to initiate a jailbreak. We're not sure what unit will be, get, will, will be granted here. We have a credit reward of 125,000 credits and bonus opportunities of 50,000 uh, additional credits. So there's no research opportunities here, but it's just a hefty sum of money that we could possibly walk away with. And considering we did just hire the Marauders, um, I've already forgot what they're called, but considering we did just hire the Marauders uh, mercenaries, we could use that to recoup some of the losses that we just spent uh, on that new mercenary contract. So, two different choices here. A jailbreak for D Gabriel Tosh, or helping the people of Haven for Dr. Ariel Hansen. So, you guys vote on that. Let me know which one you want to see. And we'll be going to Tarsonis for this mission. We've received reports of a new Dominion salvage operation on Tarsonis. They're running a large number of supply trains with minimal security. If we intercept the trains and liberate their contents before they can be shipped off-world, we could make a serious profit. Okay. Now, before I launch this mission, I should give you guys a bit of a precursor. A lot of you may have remembered watching my live stream uh, over at Justin TV many months back, where I was playing this mission on Brutal and just could not beat it. I couldn't. Many months back, I was playing this mission uh, on my live stream, and I never got past this point. I never got past this mission. So, I do know a bit of this mission. I'm not going into this one blind. It's kind of stuck with me because I've never been able to beat it on Brutal. I've beaten it on normal difficulty, but never on Brutal. Um, 
So, I'm going to be playing this as I remember it, and uh, I have played it a lot of times. I think I spent a few hours repeating this mission on my live stream and failing it over and over again. So, I'm no stranger to this particular mission. <laughs> um, this is kind of my chance to get back at it. So, I'm going to try and beat it now, because I have since then, since I was, since those days where I was not able to beat it on Brutal, I have become uh, top 8 Platinum on Battle.net. Now, I know Platinum's not a big deal. I know it's not Diamond or Masters or Grand Masters League or anything like that. Uh, but Platinum is above average. And my macro has improved, and so is my micro. Plus, I've been playing Brutal missions this entire time and succeeding at them for this Let's Play. So, I'm confident I can take on Tarsonis now. So, with all the practice that I've had with Tarsonis and all the practice that I've had on Battle.net and things like that, I'm hoping I can take this mission out. I have something of a personal vendetta against Tarsonis. So, yes, I am going to know where the locations of most of the things are already. This one is not completely blind to me like I was on the previous missions where I didn't remember a whole lot. I don't remember a whole lot about any of the other missions. This one in particular, though, has stuck with me. <laughs> so, anyway, we're going to get launching this. We're going to be opening up the Diamondback for this mission, which is a mobile tank fighter unit. It can fire while on the move. It's a very micro-intense unit. So, let's get going. Never thought we'd be back to this graveyard again. What have we got, Matt? The Dominion's restored power to the old rail network. They're using the trains to move salvage to a central processing station. Our informants say the Dominion's found something unusually valuable and they're transporting it to the processing station today. It's on one of these trains, but unfortunately they're all scan shielded so we can't tell which one. We'll have to hit as many as we can and hope we get lucky. Hope we get lucky? That ain't the usual Matt Horner plan. You got a better one, sir. I'm all ears. It's all good, Matt. You sold me. Well, let's go rob ourselves some trains. Old Tychus is gonna love this one. <laughs> yeah, let's get Tigus in on this one. Anyway, skipping this loading scene. Huh? And we're back. By the number. Alright, let me get my bearings here. Oh look, there's a Zerg research point right there on the map. That's it right there, a defiler bone sample. Sir, it turns out there are a few Confederate vehicles in the hills the Dominion haven't salvaged yet. Diamondbacks. Man, I didn't think they made it past prototyping. Their rail guns will be great for stopping those trains. No pun intended. I'll upload their schematics to our factory network. There may be other vehicles around that we can commandeer. We should keep our eyes open. What needs killing? Add-on complete. Sounds good. And there's a bunch of other things on the map here. That we can begin collecting, like this 100 mineral pallet and this Zerg research point, which we're going to have the diamond back we just trained go collect. Make sure we don't get supply blocked. Training up some more marines. And we're going to gather all of our army back up here at the base. Once we're done, no, you collect that, that's why I sent you out there, please. Of course. And you come back. The Marines just collected, or sorry, just commandeered this diamond back. This one will collect these minerals. And with those minerals, we'll train more Marines and more SCVs. And maybe another diamond back? Nope, we need gas now. Let's get everybody back to base. A train is approaching through a tunnel in the northwest. You want a piece of me, boy? Okay, here's our whole army. And here comes the first train. If you'll notice the little red line on the minimap, that's the train's route. What's the plan? And here's the train itself. Moving steadily along the rail. We are going to intercept it. Oops. Here it is. So the Marines open fire, the Diamondbacks open fire. The Diamondbacks can keep moving, though. Notice how the Marines have to run, catch up, stop, fire. Catch up, stop, fire. Catch up, stop, fire. Diamondbacks have no such problem. They can keep firing as they move. I love Diamondbacks. They're so cool. Let's train drop all those resources. 
Excellent work, sir. We can utilize the train's scrap payload to build more units. We obviously won't find many natural mineral fields here, so we should make the most of what we can salvage from the trains. These instant supply drops are also really nice. I would have been supply cap right now if it weren't for those instant supply drops. That's going to let me keep my army much much more up to date. Alright, so we need another Diamondback coming in. we got a good number of SEVs mining. Got a couple barracks. Maybe another factory is in order as well, so I can produce more Diamondbacks. This barracks is going to get a tech lab on it. A train is coming through the western tunnel. Check it out, Jimmy. Dominion started sending escorts to protect the trains. Yes, they have, Tychus. We've got these marines protecting this train. Ah, these fire bats as well. Well, let's get to it. As far as the fire bats are concerned, no problem. Diamondbacks can take out fire bats, no problem. These marines will take out the rest of them as well. So first, I want to sweep around the front here. There we go. Now my marines join in the fight. And the diamondbacks will just keep moving while the marines try and follow up. I'm actually going to stim my marines here so they can catch up. There we go. Some more resources. Commander, I'm picking up increased comm traffic from the Dominion. Sounds like they're planning to attack our base. We better be ready. Additional supply depots required. Now we just defended our base and we can get up this ramp now, which has another free diamond back for us. And some more resources, which are crucial. Complete. There it is. Go on. At the ready. I'm waiting. Go, go, go. Ready. And now we've got a medic out as well. Additional supply depots required. A train is exiting the southern tunnel. Here comes another train. We'll be ready for that one shortly. Our diamondbacks are a little banged up. I'm not that worried about it. All right, let's go intercept that train now. I hope not to be too late. Oh, Marauders. Okay, we don't want our Diamondbacks engaging Marauders. Marauders are great against Diamondbacks. Great. Miss micro a little bit there. We can follow this train up, though. Dominion are constructing a series of bunkers to protect the tracks. Be careful. All right. We're going to want some marauders coming in, too. And we just collected the last Zerg research point on this map. I want to get back to base, though. And reunite all our forces. And perhaps bring down some of these hammer securities and war pigs. That sounds good. Look at this sudden burst of reinforcements. And they're super powered. They're mercenaries. They're better than normal marines and marauders. You know what? Additional supply depots required. In order to make them even better, let's get some upgrades going. A train is coming through the western tunnel. Okay, here comes another train. We'll be ready for this one. Come to the western tunnel. Mostly fire bats and goliaths. It looks like. They got this bunker. Not enough minerals. Ah, supply depot's required. SCP's stuck now. But let's get somebody building something. Here comes. Ouch.
Alright, now let's finish up this train. And back to base. Let's get some repairs on these Diamondbacks. And let's get these repairs. Sorry, let's get these upgrades going. In the rear with the gear. What needs killing? Get a number of these SCVs out and have them begin repairing. This will be good. What's on your mind? You gonna give an attack? Seeker missile. Ouch. Not terrible. We came out of that better than I thought we would. What? This better be what? Let's get the Marines out of the way. Go on. There we go. Now the SUVs can repair. <laughs> Only three seconds until the next train. A train is approaching through a tunnel in the northwest. I can't build here. Yo. Mineral field depleted. SCV ready. Okay, so we got another train coming now. We'll go catch that one shortly. Gangway coming through. Kaboom, baby. I'm gonna leave behind that one damaged diamond back and let him get repaired by the SCVs. Insufficient gas. Ouch, we could probably use his firepower. The doctor is in. Ouch. What needs killing? Not a big problem. Alright, plenty of resources from that one. Oh, we're out of minerals. In our base, that's horrible. I don't like that idea at all, but we've got some resources here that we gotta spend. What needs killing? And a good number of diamondbacks too. And as long as the SCVs aren't doing anything, might as well get them repairing. Sir, I'm detecting Dominion kill teams patrolling the tracks with large groups of marauders. I'll mark their location with a red warning symbol. Still, you should try to avoid them. Avoid the kill teams? No, I want to kill the kill teams so they don't come back and haunt me. I'm waiting. What's up? A train is coming through the western tunnel. The Dominion are boosting their train speed somehow. We'll need to use Diamondbacks to catch them. We can do it. What's the I'm waiting. Oh, that is a fast moving train. Geyser We've got to catch it too. Here we go. go Alright. Come on, Marines. Everybody keep up. We can't keep up. That one's gone. That train made it away. Dang it, I don't like that idea. That means we have no resources this run. Go on. Here comes a Dominion kill team. What needs killing? We might as well take him out. So we don't run into him alongside a train. Sir, one of the no. trains got through. We can't let too many get past us or we'll miss the cargo we're looking for. Thank you, Matt. I'm really worried about that kill team. I'm really worried about a lot of this. I'm completely out of minerals. We've got a sizable army, though. We just lost what? one diamond back. Okay, let's take out that kill team. What's on your mind? And no, those weren't my medics dying, those were theirs. A train is approaching through a tunnel in the northwest. You know, it may very well have been some of my medics. Okay, here comes another train. And again, it's nice and sped up. This time, I'm going to focus even my marines and everything on that lead car at first. Take some losses to our army just to make sure we take out the train. Got it. Go on. 
Now we'll get everybody fighting. While well, my marines fight down there. There we go. Now we've got some resources. With those resources, we'll get some medics into play, some more marines. Another couple of diamondbacks. And that uses up all our resources, unfortunately. What? Okay. There's another free diamond back over here, and we might have time to actually go get it, too. So, let's go take advantage of that. We've got a minute before the next train. The kill teams aren't roaming. Alright. Let's get up this, here, this hill. This ramp. And there's another diamond back right there that we can add to our force. And now let's get back to base so we can be ready. Please state the nature of your medical emergency. At the ready. Oh, we managed to train another diamond back of our own as well. Another pair of them. Good. We've got some resources out here too. Insufficient Vespine gas. Ah, we're out of Vespine gas as well. I guess it's war pigs. A train is coming through the western tunnel. Comes another super sped up train. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to focus even our bio units on that lead car at first. What? Everything on that lead car at first. And now we'll stop. And let the Diamondbacks do their thing. There we go. This is working well. And now we got to get one more diamond back, which I think is... Actually, I have no idea where it is. I'm going to guess it's over here. I'm going to hope it's over here. And hope that's not one I've already collected or something. More hammer securities. Another diamond back coming down. Nice. More resources. And another diamond back. All right. Looks like we found all the Confederate Diamondbacks, sir. This should really help out against the trains. Yes, it should. And let's get everybody back home. Hopefully, we can get some of these Diamondbacks repaired by these SCVs. By the numbers, boys. Whoa. Go on. What's on your mind? Everybody back here. What needs killing? Pretty hefty little attack. Alright, SCVs get repairing. Oh, you can't. You don't have the gas to do it. Another attack. A train is exiting the southern tunnel. Great. Looks like the Dominion ran out of whatever they were juicing the trains with. They're putting out bigger escorts, though. We better watch ourselves. Oh, what are those? Dusk wings. I forgot about those. Like super banshees. Dang it. All right. Um, I don't think we want to take them head on. Or do we? Ah, whatever. Let's try it. It's got to keep the Diamondbacks on the train. All right. I think we're going to get it. All right. Sir, we're detecting electrical activity in the wreckage. Now let's see what they were so fired up to get their hands on. Adjective two three dash four six online. System recording. New 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 Gettysburg Defense Initiative. S submit access code. Well, I'll be. Confederate adjutant. What intel so important to go and dig her up to recover it? Okay. Well, I'm glad my personal vendetta against this mission has finally been absolved. <laughs> ah, that feels good to know that many, many months ago when I was playing this mission on my stream. And I was able to beat it 
since that point, I've improved to the point where I can actually, with some effort, <laughs> defeat that mission. But things are getting a lot tougher for me now on Brutal, I'm going to admit. And things are going to probably going to be an uphill battle for me, because <laughs> there's, uh, there's still a lot more of this game to go, <laughs> and it's just getting progressively more difficult. In any case, here's the score screen. You guys can pause and watch that if you want, or read that if you want, and we are going to continue on. Sir, that adjutant we recovered is down in the lab. She's all powered up. Talk to me, you old piece of junk. What do you know? User identified. Rainer, James, ex-marshal, Marsara Colony. Joined Sons of Korhal Terrorist Group. Status, criminal. Enough about me, darling. What else you got locked up in that synthetic head of yours? User status, criminal. Access denied. Playing hard to get, huh? We'll see about that. So, that's what Matt was going after. New research project, Predator. New research project, Hercules. Okay. Uh, well, Matt didn't specifically know he was going after that adjutant down in the laboratory. You know, let's go take a look at it real quick. Just I, so I, while I'm talking about it, you guys can get a visual. This is an old Confederate adjutant from the original StarCraft games. StarCraft and StarCraft Brood War. Um, why would the Dominion want this, first of all? And even though I, I have played through this game before, a lot of this is semi-new to me, too, because I've forgotten a lot about it, so... A lot of this is being revealed to me at the same time as you guys, and that's one reason I wanted to do this series, is because I know Heart of the Swarm is coming out. Uh, it's on the horizon, you know, you never know with Blizzard, but it's coming out when it's ready. Uh, supposedly sometime next year, I don't know what the whole deal is with its release date. But Heart of the Swarm is coming out, and I wanted to refresh myself on the storyline with Wings of Liberty. So a lot of this is, you know, practically new to me. I mean, even though I've beaten the game before, I don't remember a lot of it. Large chunks of the game are missing for me, especially this part. Um, I didn't know what the Dominion was hauling in those trains. I didn't know that this adjutant was in there, and this is an ex-Confederate adjutant. An old, it's very old-school type of adjutant, and I wonder what is locked up in that synthetic head of hers. Uh, in any case, uh, Matt didn't know he was going after this. He just knew that their cargo was valuable. So, let's go back to the cantina. Oh, wait, the research console. There might be something new for us. Oh, yes, the Zerg tank has something pointing to it. All right, um, I'll give you guys the option to vote here in just a moment, but let's see what Stetman's found out. Stetman Log, entry 2297. The Zerg sample has developed an ocular organ. Will limbs be next? There is a basic dichotomy to Zerg cell reproduction. Type A cells throw off seemingly random mutations. Type B cells hunt down these mutations and destroy them. It's survival of the fittest on a cellular level. Successful mutations thrive. I used microscopic scrapings from the sample to test an electrical discharge field I'd been thinking with. For, sorry, I'd been tinkering with for some time. The results were gratifying. As an interesting side effect, the Zerg matter developed into a very dense but flexible material. This material could be used to reinforce the superstructure of those old Hercules-class cargo ships that Swan's always trying to find a use for. I wish there were time to both pursue the discharge field and iterate on the hardened matter. I doubt there will be. Okay, so he's found an electrical discharge field he's been playing with, and he's also found some hardened matter as a result of this Zerg research. So let's see what that actually means for us in the research console. Again, semi-new to me. <laughs> I don't know what's coming here. So here we are on tier three of our Zerg research. The Predator is our new research. An anti-infantry specialist has a powerful area attack. Let's see what this thing does. Oh, interesting. Anti-infantry specialist periodically emits a powerful area shock attack built at the factory. So that's the electrical charge he was talking about. The Predator is equipped with an electrified discharge field. 
The field activates each time the Predator strikes an enemy in combat, dealing heavy damage to all nearby enemy units. This makes the Predator a devastatingly effective counter to large groups of enemy units. So, I don't know where this is built from. I don't know. If this, I would assume the factory because it is a mechanical unit. So, we have the option of taking on a new type of anti-infantry unit that we'd be able to build. Or, what else do we have? The Hercules, which is a massive transport. Can deploy loaded troops almost instantly. So the Hercules is a huge transport where we can load up our units. Let's see what almost instantly means. Wow, that is very quick. That is a lot of Marines! And did you see how much damage the Hercules took from those spore colonies before it even reached its destination? That is useful. It's read out as, Massive transport ship. Deploys loaded troops almost instantly. Loaded troops survive if Hercules is destroyed? That's awesome, and it's built at the starport. We have retrofitted the Hercules-class cargo ship for use on the battlefield. This massive transport can carry entire armies and unload them at record speeds. The Hercules will also eject survival pods if shot down. Ejected occupants will sustain damage, but most would agree that injury is preferable to death. Okay, so you guys choose between that. They're both really cool, in my opinion. Predator or Hercules. In my, um, From what I remember, I didn't make much use of either of these before, and I'm looking forward to playing with either of these new toys. So, you guys make your vote. On whether we should get the Predator or the Hercules. And we'll close out the research console. And let's see what Dr. Ariel Hansen has to say about this new adjutant. If she has something to say about that at all, and not something else. Jim, let me in. What really happened on Tarsonis? Whatever it was, I can see it tearing you up inside. Tarsonis. That's where it all went down. Meng stole a psi emitter from the Confederacy and planted it there. He knew that it attracted the Zerg, and our revolution began that day. The day Mengsk murdered a whole planet and called it justice. My god. Billions of innocent people. That's... that's just... monstrous. No wonder you hate him so much. <laughs> Moving on. Let's get back to the cantina where the cutscene left us. Ladies and gentlemen, each night I bring you the news in the most fair and balanced manner possible. But tonight I have a commentary. Some have asked me what the difference is between our leader, Emperor Mengsk, and the traitor, Jim Rayner. They point out that Mengsk rebelled against the government of his youth and came to power through the use of violence and subversion. Why is it wrong for Jim Rayner to rebel in similar fashion? There is a difference. When Emperor Mengsk began his revolution, there was no threat hanging over humanity. James Rayner is waging his revolution while we are at war with two alien races. James Rayner, have you no conscience? Shouldn't you fall in line, putting your petty complaints aside as we struggle for humanity's very survival against this alien menace? Everyone's a critic. <laughs> Everyone's a critic. Indeed. Have you been reading YouTube comments, Rainer? Robbing a train again get you feeling nostalgic? Damn straight. We must have hit the Shell Express a dozen times back in the day. <laughs> oh, that keeper never got old. Almost got us killed when they smartened up and started using Outriders to chase us. Never was a man of them could keep up with you on a vulture, Jimmy. Just add it to the fun. How the hell you got a job as Marshal after all that? I'll never know. <laughs> Ah, uh, reminiscing about old times. Let's see what's available in the armory for us. Hey, Swan. Yeah, yeah, good old days, robbing trains, yada yada, bang bang, yeah. I'm making diamond backs. Shouldn't the diamond back be in here somewhere? We're missing out on something here. Huh. Well, you better make more diamond backs because we need a model in here that I can click to show people into the armory console. We have new upgrades for vehicles. Of course, the upgrades would come for the Diamondback. Try lithium power cell. Diamondbacks gain plus one range. Interesting. <laughs> These three Dominion Diamondbacks can't outrange our 
uh, our Diamondbacks in this little cutscene here. <laughs> they had plus one range on them. That's pretty interesting. What else do they get? Shaped hull. Diamondbacks, Diamondbacks gain plus 50 life. Makes them more durable. That's pretty cool. Which is one thing we could have used in our last mission. Too many of them fell to, well, Goliath fire. And seeker missiles and things like that. So that's pretty cool. I will not be getting any of these upgrades for the moment. The siege tank, however, the shaped blast seems pretty cool, and it's something that I did want to purchase. <laughs> purchase? It's something I did want to purchase. 140,000. Hmm. Let's see if there's anything else I want to spend my credits on first. We've been to the laboratory, we've been to the bridge. We haven't been to the bridge, actually. We've been to the cantina. Have we seen the mercenaries? You came to the right place. I don't think there were any more new mercenaries to hire. There are not, and I don't want to hire any of the others as well, because I don't use Goliaths or Firebats all that much. So, it only makes sense that our next upgrade should go to our siege tanks, which are a staple Terran unit. As awesome as the Diamondbacks are, siege tanks are... Siege tank is Terran, pretty much. So, we've gotten both upgrades for our siege tanks now, and we're only at 15,000 credits. Okay, guys, we'll get back to the bridge and possibly talk to Matt one more time. Yep. I've been looking for an encryption expert so we can access the adjutant we recovered. No luck so far. Colonel Orlin at Dead Man's Port can crack anything. Haven't been back there in a while. Say, didn't you end up getting married last time we were there? I told you before, if I knew what the prize was, I never would have joined that card game. There's just something about a lover's reunion that chokes me up. <sighs> Matt got married as a result of winning a card game. <laughs> and he's too good of a guy to divorce her or whatever it is. <laughs> I don't think he really wants to be with her. <laughs> or maybe he does. Maybe he's just... Maybe he keeps his feelings for her close to his chest, you know? <laughs> In any case, remember you guys have a vote between New Folsom and Haven for the next mission. I'm not going to click the star map because I'm afraid of seeing another mission in the star map. Um, Alright, I'll click it. I know you guys want me to. Oh, no. <laughs> There's more than just another mission. There's two new missions. Alright, I still want the vote between... Uh, sorry, I still want the vote to be between Haven and New Folsom. Again, New Folsom is Tosh's mission and it's a jailbreak. Haven is Dr. Ariel Hansen's mission, and it's for us to try and see what's going on with her people. She lost contact with them, and we don't know if it's a Zerg Protoss threat that we're facing, or even Dominion. I doubt Dominion, because it's a phase of Protoss space, and then Dominion is pulled back to their core worlds. But in any case, Haven or New Folsom, those are your two choices. We'll worry about Tirador 8 and Dead Man's Post at some other point. The next mission, I believe, is going to be going back into Zeratul's memory. I think we'll go back into the Crystal and to the next Protoss mission. So, until then, vote on these two missions and what uh, research upgrade that you want from our tier 3, I think it is, Zerg Research. So, alright. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'm going to cut it off here. I think I've covered everything that I want to cover. I hope I haven't missed anything. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you guys next time.